Yo, what up street dogs, Eric here. All right, so the upside of poverty. So I grew up poor, not like super duper duper poor. Like I was, for the most part, I really never went hungry, but certainly with my dad rent, uh, gambling away the rent money and my mom telling me as a kid like, oh Eric, your dad just gambled away the rent money. We might be homeless next month or we had to go into shelter, blah, blah. So it certainly hardened me as a child. Now. The, the thing that's interesting is actually during COVID, who is getting the most hurt? I think it's actually um, the upper class and the, um, the rich. And why is that? Because if you're protected from hardship, you're kind of like a poodle. You throw a poodle into the wilderness, it will die instantly. But if you have like kind of more of a mutt, kind of scrappy dog that's kind of more wolf-like during times of stress, it will actually uh, survive and not, not die. So for myself, I mean, certainly I don't wish poverty on anybody, but the way I think about it is hardship in life isn't something necessary to be avoided and obviously we're all trying to improve the quality of our lives and we don't want to go through the same hardships as our parents did but still i think there's something to said about kind of the upsides of living hard knock life so these are my basic thoughts so for example financial issues are always a problem with my family kind of growing up like my mom's like holding down like 10 trillion jobs you know with like menial labor work, like waitressing, cleaning houses and stuff like that. But actually, it made me so much more grateful because since I knew how hard my, since I knew how hard my mom was hustling, essentially I didn't, I didn't become this like ungrateful brat. So even when my mom would buy me presents, as a child, I was genuinely grateful because I knew she didn't have much and she was sacrificing so much of the money just to give me a better, um, life and stuff like that. Like I remember my mom sending me to these summer camps to Lego camp and all these things that was really out of her budget but she had just put in the extra hours. And it wasn't actually until I, I um, when I was in high school, I worked as a bus boy at the, the restaurant she was working at. And I first started, that was my real taste of physical labor and toil. And man, after that, I'm like, yo, I'm never gonna complain about life about any sort of hardship because having to stand and work with her hands and legs for like eight to 12 hours a day. She does uh, hard work. And I guess the upside of all of this was now that all this craziness and this chaos is happening, for the most part, it actually is not like impacting me too much where, you know, I've, I've been resilient, I've been strong, and it's just a consequence of my hard knock life. I don't really attribute too much of the me becoming me to my own personal whatevers. It's just more of like, I'm kind of a product of my environment. And one of the upsides of poverty too is also you realize that you could really get by on not that much. Like even though we're super poor or whatever, you know, we never went hungry. And even in America, honestly, at this point, even if you're poor or living in poverty or whatever, you're not gonna die from starvation. That's kind of whatever. I mean, I know things that I personally had to go through, which is like a little bit embarrassing where in high school, I didn't have that much money, so whenever my friends would go out and eat and buy food, I'd pretend like I wasn't hungry because I just didn't have the money to buy, you know, that $13 hamburger and fries. And even when I was in college, you know, um, I did work study and stuff like that, I had to save up my monies. And so my friends would go out and, you know, would order like a shawarma plate for like 15 bucks, which is a lot of money, right? And then, They'll be like, oh, you know, you aren't, you aren't ordering anything, Eric? And then just like out of embarrassment, I just, oh, I'm not hungry, but I was, I was totally hungry. And so living, a, living that kind of life is um, pretty tough, but I guess the upside of all of it is you just don't take things for granted. You don't take things for granted. And, and I think it's kind of hardened me. It, it was kind of like I became a stoic at a young age. And even now, like, I'm pretty, I mean, obviously I feel emotions and stuff like that, but I'm a lot less sensitive than other people's that I know. And I think I'm just kind of a little bit more indifferent. Ooh. Nice little things here. 
So I think I'm a little bit more indifferent. I'm a little bit harder and stronger. And petty small things don't really bother me so much. And, you know, poverty, especially when you're a kid growing up, you see what your parents had to sacrifice. It really does instill in you a strong work ethic because I knew that you know, my mom, like, my mom wouldn't, wouldn't give me money, not because she didn't have the money to give, it was like literally she just had no money. So I kind of realized if I want to buy some cool clothes or shoes or whatever, I had to work for it. And so I was always scheming of ways to, to make money or get jobs and stuff like that. So I tutored throughout school. One of my first entrepreneurial things when I was around, I think like 16 or 17, one of my friends, his name was also Eric, Eric Moon. He taught me how to build PCs, like custom PCs. So I made a few PCs, uh, sold them to some uh, kids at school, made like a thousand bucks, and then I used that to buy my first car. Now, that joy of buying your own car with your own hard-earned money is probably the greatest joy in life. So for example, like if you gave me a Lamborghini, no hands, uh, nothing attached, I wouldn't be as overjoyed as if I had to work and hustle for something and then the payoff is greater. Same thing with like building up your body, right? Is if you just gave me a magic pill and then boom, I became like the Hulk overnight. I wouldn't be as grateful as if right now I actually enjoy the slow, steady progress and growth of my muscles. That to me is far more joyful and interesting than, you know, just being able to... And that's, that's, a, that's the thing that's actually kind of interesting too is that no matter how rich or poor you are, everyone needs to work their body and build their body. So even bodybuilders, one of the things that I admire is, it truly is through your work and determination that you become so big. I mean, obviously, like there's some dudes taking like steroids and stuff like that. But the, 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 the thing I find interesting with steroids, it seems at most, it only gives you like a 10 to 20% edge, which is significant, but still you have to work really, really hard for what you got. So, in, things, in thinking about poverty, living a hard knock life, even other things I realized, you know, I came from nothing and then now, you know, I got, I got racks in the safe. So, uh, for the most part, I don't worry too much about finances anymore. And because I know I can live such a poverty lifestyle, nothing really bothers me. I already have all the tools. I got my laptop, I got my camera, I have Wi-Fi. And even with food, you know, I know that I could eat like a baller and get the gains on, you know, eating 99 cent a pound chicken leg quarters, 99 cent pound pork, or sometimes we even get 79 cent a pound for pork shoulder roast. And so just realizing that there are like lots of upsides to living more of a poverty poor people lifestyle. Even now, like I don't have a phone for the most part. I have like this like seven year old Samsung S5 that um, I usually keep off. And so, what is the point of all this in existence in life? My thought is, it's not to get distracted by the present, but to put the skin of at least the 300 years between you and your contemporaries, which means you devote your life to pursuing knowledge, art, greatness, and realizing that perhaps, you know, a lot of these philosophers in the past were, you know, correct in the sense that the best way to ultimate freedom, to ultimate liberation, to pursue your photographic or philosophical aims is for you to adopt an intentional life of poverty. And it's not like poverty, like self abnegation where you're just kind of like, you know, whipping yourself, but it's actually preferring kind of more of a Spartan lifestyle, a Spartan lifestyle, which is hard, severe, and you kind of delight in the severe simplicity of life. So if you want some inspiration, um, read any of the histories on the Spartans, yes they are real. Rewatch um, 300 by uh, Zack Snyder or read the 300 comic by Frank Miller. And just cut, let us learn how to be kind of hybrid of stoic, Spartan, artist, philosopher. And learn to love poverty for her beautiful gifts. <laughs>